Dr. Fizz, Theoretical Physics Complex Integration, Example 3. We want to integrate this integral here where m is greater than 0. What I have done is replace the x with z's in preparation for our complex analysis. Step 1, find your poles. Now the poles come from this denominator, since the numerator presents no problems in terms of 1 over 0. So I set the denominator equal to 0 and use the quadratic formula. Think of this as a z squared plus bz plus c equals 0 and the quadratic formula says start out with minus b so the minus 2i goes in for the b then you have plus or minus the square root of b squared so the 2i is in there squared minus 4a which is 1 c which is negative 2. All divided by 2a, which is 1. Now the negative negative here is a, gives a 2i, and then here the negative 2i, the whole thing squared is 4i squared, which is negative 4, and then negative 4 times a negative 2 is a plus 8. 8 minus 4 is 4, and you're taking the square root of 4, which is a 2. So you have 2i plus or minus 2 all over 2. Where are these poles in the complex z plane. Well, the uh, 2r, well let's see, you have i plus 1. That's one of them. i plus 1. There it is. The other one is i minus 1. i minus 1. I've labeled these from left to right. 1, 2. The next step, step 2, nowhere to close the deal. Well, we have an integrand where you have a quadratic in the denominator. So that means our analysis that we did earlier applies here. When you have 1 over z squared as a leading term and do your semicircle analysis, then you let z equal to r you know, times e to the i theta. r is your radius. That's a positive value. And then in the denominator, you have 1 over r squared. And in your numerator from your dz, you'll have 1 power of r. So you have a net 1 over r. And as r goes to infinity, then you get 0 for that semicircle. I want to make sure this e to the imz here, m greater than 0, does not cause any problem. And what I am afraid of, see, here is that when I have this circle, this semicircle up here, I have a radius r that's sweeping here so that my complex variable z, which here is real, simply r, when it gets up here, that z will be purely imaginary. It'll be i times r. r is my radius. So when I put in i r, that's in a sense like a worst case scenario, then I get i m times i r, the i squared gives a negative 1, and I get e to the minus m r. Now r is the radius, that's positive of course, m is given as positive, so I get no problem from this, so I'm good. So I will close above. Step 3, sum your residues, use the residue theorem. Now the residue theorem will take care of the poles, it'll take care of this, but I thought it would be neat to show you these two contour integrals. Here the linear paths cancel because they go in opposite directions and then this is equivalent to these two and this one gives 2 pi i times a residue involving this one and this gives the 2 pi i uh, times residue involving that one. Well you already know this, I just wanted to remind you that this kind of thing goes on behind the scenes when we're applying something like this. Alright, let's uh, find those residues. So 2 pi i times residues. First, the residues. Well, the residue for the first pole, you throw out the first case, z minus z1, you throw it out, and then whatever is left here, you put in z1. So whatever is left is your exponential over z minus z2. Then for the second pole, you throw out the second one, and here you have the exponential over z minus z1, and put in z2 wherever you have your z's. Then we multiply by 2 pi i, since we need to do that, times the sum of the residues, and that gives us this 
formula here where I am going to factor out z1 minus z2 since I see it appears here twice. Here it's flipped so the minus sign will appear when I pull it out. And then I notice that z1 minus z2 is minus 2. The i's cancel and I get minus 2. And then I'm ready to put in the values for z1 and z2. Here the 2's cancel, I have minus pi i, and for z1 I have minus 1 plus i. For z2 I have 1 plus i. Then I bring the i in, negative i, and i squared, negative 1. Bring the i in, i, and the i squared, negative 1. Then I write the exponential as a product of two factors, e to the minus i m times e to the minus m and then the minus sign and e to the plus i m times e to the minus m. Then I factor out the e to the minus m and I look at this and think sign because uh, here look if you put the minus sign in there you flip the two and then if you put a 2i there and divide by 2i, you have the sine of m. So we go to our last step, we get the sine of m, we have a 2, we have the pi, we have e to the minus m and i squared minus 1. We are finished.